You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List Online. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith. Hope you're well. The interview subject that I've got coming up for you is Gavin Bowles. Gavin is a very talented singer, songwriter and composer from Western Sydney. The reason for the conversation with Gavin is to promote his brand new single. It's called The Daily Grind. So here he is, Gavin Bowles. I was the, uh, yeah, it was... Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Okay, sweet. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Was it just the mic <laughs> setting? Was it? Yeah, it was. Um, it was trying to use my interface, which isn't plugged in. So <laughs> yeah, Scott. And I tell you what, that's been recent from Scott. Just let me go on a rant here for a bit. I've done at this point in time, it's well over five hundred interviews, and I don't know about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, or something like that. They decided to change the way Skype acts. Now, I used to work for Telstra, so yeah, I get right. a lot of this sort of stuff. I'm used to it. But the things that they made this thing do right. make absolutely no sense at all. And one of them mm. was that you've actually got to reselect both the audio and the listening device that you cho- you intend on use. Otherwise, it'll pick for you. And if, like me, as it sounds like you are, you've got <laughs> multiple things going on, well, you're not going to be able to talk or hear each other half the time. Yeah, that's it. You know, yeah, so. I just closed a tab hoping it'll help. <laughs> but, mate, here we are. Here we are. And I'm glad that we're here because, uh, look, I, I do like your music. It's it's raw. It's upbeat. It's sprightly. These are but a few descriptors that I've conjured to allow the listener to my podcast series to relate to your music in some way. And, and look, I've got to say, I've really only heard the one cut, The Daily Grind, but I've listened to it a fair bit. Um, but as I, as I use those descriptors, that's what comes to mind. When I was reading through your bio, though, and you talked about Elvis Costello, I, I did think about Elvis prior to even reading it because mm-hmm. I have, being a bassist, I've played quite a bit of his stuff in covers, bands, and just in general because he's always had a great rhythm section. Um, and look, you've got a great, you've got a, from the sounds of things, you've got a killer band around you as well. And uh, artists like yourself prove that Australia is home to musicians and songwriters, very much the equal of anything that comes out of London or New York. So, all that said, mate, what else can you tell me about the music that you're crafting here and indeed the single there, The Daily Grind? Yeah, um, so I definitely, uh, definitely influenced by um, Elvis Costello and um, I, I definitely wanted that song in particular to have kind of a, a really sort of poppy, uh, poppy bounce to it um, of that era of that music that I kind of call power pop, which is sort of not quite punk rock, not quite you know, sort of, um, uh, yeah, just, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, because the song is a little sarcastic and, and it is about something that while, you know, sort of taking a lighthearted stab, it is a thing that can get people down, which is, you know, at the time I was working two casual jobs, essentially six days a week on a diet of beer and coffee and just (laughs) kind of wanted to tackle the subject matter in a light heart with a lighthearted sound an approach mm-hmm. um and uh which is something that i think um someone like elvis costello does really well mm-hmm. um so that's why i've always liked that approach um yeah look i i i'm really lucky to have great musicians around me um my drummer is my brother um so we've been playing music together you know since day dot um and then my bassist cameron um was in a band with me and my brother called Picture Perfect for about a decade. Um, and then also I've got a, um, a keyboard player called Wesley and um, I played with him in a few cover bands and different things over the years. And the four of us have actually all played together in lots of different, you know, kind of cover bands and originals bands sort of intertwining over the years. And we've all been really good friends, but this is the first time that the four of us have gotten together to do something original and um, the whole idea um, with these songs and playing with them is it's all about having fun and a nice fun atmosphere. So Mm -hmm. a lot of the songs have the same sort of upbeat vibe um, and that's how we want the live shows to go and how they were going up until recent times, (laughs) which is just about getting together and having fun. 
Yeah, I'll ask this question now as I've asked it. I've got a block of interviews. I'm interviewing six people tonight. So you're, you're my fifth to give you an idea. And I've asked, us the same, right. I've asked the same question. I've got different different answers back each time on the four before you. But because of COVID-19, yeah, we are locked down. And, and I mean, it's not looking great for live music in terms of when we can get back out there and do it again. There's other segments of the economy that are going to be opened up before the bars and clubs are going to allow music to happen. Therefore, a greater congregation of people which leads to the issue that you can't actually promote a release like this in the way that you would have done since time time immemorial. So I, I'd really hate for a release like this to fall through the cracks, okay, and for it to just be one of those releases that was happened to coincide with COVID-19, therefore it didn't get through to people mm. because you couldn't play live. So what are you doing to spread the word at the moment? Obviously you're doing podcasts, but about apart from podcasts, what else are you doing? Um, so I, um, I, I've been doing a couple, uh, community radio interviews as well. Um, and I've done a few sort of like, um, you know, blog and other sort of social media editorial things, mm -hmm. which has been good. Um, and, um, and we put out a film clip as well. So that always, that always helps because that film clip will, you know, will kind of live there in the, um, you know, on, on Facebook and YouTube and, and it'll be something that we can use as promotion for next time we go on tour as well. And the visual just always helps, um, you know, rather than just having a, a single that people stream. Um, so yeah, look, as soon as we can get out and play, we will. Um, cause we were, we were literally about to start a tour the weekend that they Shit. brought in the restrictions. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, we were all, we were all rehearsed and ready to go. So we're just kind of biding our time. And in the meantime, I've been, um, finishing off some other tracks and, um, and the other, the guys have a few more parts to, to flesh out as well. So we'll be releasing more music later in the year. Um, but you know, al already we chucked the song in a couple of live sets before it was released and it was already kind of a highlight of the live set. So I think we'll just be, you know, pushing it live. Um, and, you know, from experience and from, you know, um, also a lot of other bands that, that I've seen and I like sometimes maybe a single doesn't sort of, um, you know, penetrate as a release for whatever reason, but it lives on as a live track almost more than it could have as, you know, having a big bang as it comes out sure yeah yeah sure yeah look I, I, the lyrical theme i can certainly relate to it because i'm in the middle of a I was, I was trying to come up with something smart to say before but a third life crisis if not a midlife crisis or something like that in that <laughs> I've, I've shifted from my role at telstra as an account executive uh, i've been back at uni at bond uni and i'm going to come out as a journalist so I've got my last semester coming up which of course will predominantly be done online but i can the point is i can certainly relate to the rat race and the themes jobs mortgages i think any adult who's leading a an adult life can relate to um but did you yourself did you just look around one yeah. day and think i've got to write a song about this well yeah i as i said at the time at the time i actually wrote it um in when i was living in melbourne i'm currently back in the blue mountains where i'm originally from but um uh, I, I was working these two casual jobs and um what actually happened to really spark it apart from just, you know, having that general feeling of kind of all, always being, always feeling really sort of manic, but tired at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Hey, I get um, it, man. We all, we all experience that as adults. Yeah. I think if you're not experiencing that as an adult, I'd like to know what the hell you're doing with your life. Because <laughs> <Yeah, that, laughs> so many of us do. And this, this, this pandemic has sort of shown that up. That's how I feel about it. So when when yes. when I was yeah. listening to your lyrics and this, I thought, yeah, you get it. You've done this before. Yeah. So I think that there was de definitely that feeling, but the the thing that really sparked the the song specifically um, was that I I was working at a, a at a bottle shop that had a couple locations, and we did deliveries in a little minivan in between our locations. And um, I, I'd only started working there a couple of weeks prior and I'd never driven the van before. And one day the boss just said, oh, here's the van, go deliver. And I was just kind of thrown in the deep end. You know, you've got three hours to deliver all these cases of wine. Um, and I threw my back out a little bit. And then the next morning I was, I was walking to my other job, which was a, a hospitality job. 
um, and uh, <laughs> and I was having trouble standing up straight, and um, and I was just a bit over it, um, trying to have that work life balance. Um, so I, I, I so I jotted down that first line, which is working hard just to break my back, and then I think about you know I, I, like a third of the song came out as well in that walk to work, and then I, I think I fleshed the rest of it out in a little session mm-hmm. with my guitar maybe a week later. Um, and so, yeah, just that, that, that time, yeah, just, um, you know, uh, yeah, as we're saying, just that kind of, th- those work-life balance things and feeling, yeah, tired, frustrated, you know, I was on a very steady diet of beer and coffee, you know, the uppers and downers <laughs> and to, pizza. to even yourself out as well. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and, and anything <laughs> you can, you know, you can get your hands on just to, you know, cause um, you know, I, I often say, um, to, to my wife, um, you know, now that I have a, a slightly sort of calmer, um, you know, I- I- existence, at least, you know, work related, I'm so used to those jobs where you have to eat on the fly that I don't, I never chew my food. Like I, I'm done, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm done with dinner, I'm done with dinner and she's not even halfway through. Um, so, you know, I'll, <laughs> So I'm saying, can you remind me to chew my food? Because I've always had, you know, hospital jobs and, and casual jobs where you either don't get a break or you get a five-minute break to scoff down a whole plate of food or something. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. that was uh, definitely something that was also, yeah, in it, just all those all those little things. You just feel them all at once sometimes. It's interesting. The fellow I spoke to before yourself was CJ Stranger, who's a fellow Blue Mountains musician. He's from Blacksland. And I, I was mentioning... Yeah, we're, him, we're good, mate, good mates. Well, tell him, when you talk to him, tell him I'm sorry because I actually mentioned to him, I thought, because I've got a block of six interviews, as I mentioned, but I asked him, I said, your bio mentions that you, you spent on a Western Sydney, North Melbourne and the Blue Mountains. And he goes, don't know about North Melbourne. Now I know what he's talking about because I'm actually talking about your bio. So I guess I'll ask the question to you now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, because it's so unusual <laughs> to talk to two people yep. from the Blue Mountains. It's not exactly a, a well-known musical... Uh, place or where, where musicians come from. Well, certainly, you know, it could, it could be, but certainly as far as I'm aware. But, you know, your bio, your bio, I'll get it right this time, does talk about receiving inspiration from the places that you've lived in, as in Western Sydney, North Melbourne and the Blue Mountains. And I'm interested because they're, they're three fairly unique and different places, aren't they? And Western Sydney is, isn't the Blue Mountains. It's, it's its own suburban outcrop. And then the Blue Mountains has, has its own vibe. It's a far older than people realise. It's actually a convict settlement. Mm up that way and North Melbourne again I don't know much about Melbourne uh, but because I went through a boarding school in Sydney I'm fairly familiar with the Blue Mountains and maybe not all of Western Sydney but the idea of it being a sprawling multicultural Western uh, metropolis is in Western Sydney so my point is they're three fairly disparate places to to draw inspiration from so how do they how do they inform your music in that way yeah well they they definitely are very different and I think that um you know, I, I grew up in the I grew up in the lower Blue Mountains, um, which is only about an hour from Sydney, and now I'm in the upper mountains, so I'm about two hours from Sydney. Yeah. Um, and so the Blue Mountains definitely has a slower pace, um, and it's uh, you know it, it's it's a lot more sort of chilled out, a little more family orientated, um, but there really is a thriving sort of music scene here. It's small, but what I should say is it has a very creative hub here. There's just a lot of creative people living here. You know, we're two hours from Sydney, so the rent's a lot cheaper. Um, and there's really great bars and, you know, just kind of less of that, um, you know, sort of nanny state feeling, if you will. Or, you know, there's yeah. definitely sort of, you know, less of, you know, you you hang out in Sydney now and there's just cops everywhere. So th- there's definitely a, a lot more sort of just, freedom and, and, and chilled out sort of vibes, especially playing shows around here. Um, one of my favorite venues is, is in the upper mountains, um, called station bar. Okay. Um, so the, the blue mountains kind of having that relaxed sort of atmosphere and, and having all the, um, you know, all the serenity, if you will, you know, all the, all, all the, oh, yeah. all, all the bush and, and, and all the, the wide open spaces. That, that definitely helps and it's kind of good to sort of have a, a, that that clear um, it kind of helps you get a bit of a clear head but then I think sometimes living in a place it's like um, I was much in like Collingwood Fitzroy area 
okay. um, where it's it, it it's you know that despite the fact that you know it's sort of like hipster central and and it's it's sort of chilled for a city um it's still a faster pace you know me sort of growing up in the blue mountains just that you know just we, we were living in, a, in in an apartment with people on the same floor as us and above and below next to another apartment block you know par- parking spaces all, all around us and just were kind of like you know sardines yeah. well, at least that's where we felt um and then yeah the, just that sort of tight-knit um sort of living environment um but by the same token having freedoms that you don't have when you live so far from a city as in you know nightlife and and yeah. and just being a stone's throw from from anything um so and, and again melbourne has its own sort of creative hub obviously um and you know great nightlife and i i've got lots of really good friends there that i met and and you know musicians and other creative people as well so sure. i definitely fed off them because i was working at a bar which had a lot of rockabilly and blues and like alt country and stuff so i really i, I really loved um getting sort of involved in that circle of people yep. um and then yeah western sydney is western sydney is interesting i think every i think every australian city has about a 20 minute drive away from the cbd and then you've just got you know uh you know that's it's just all um power lines and concrete jungle and 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 then there's a shopping mall somewhere and then there's just you know uh, yeah. just convenience stores everywhere it's 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 actually in a almost in a sense a faster pace than a cbd itself um, and you are confronted with a lot more, um, I think, diversity in, with people's living situations. A lot of housing commission, especially where we were, which was um, sort of like the Penrith area. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of there's a lot of that. Um, you know, you're also next door to maybe a retirement home or something, and um, just a lot of the stuff that you know you don't find in the in the city or or maybe not, you know not as often because cities generally mm. have either a younger crowd or 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 young families or or you know sort of corporate business people and stuff but the, there's a huge melting pot in those um really you know really suburban areas and and I think there's a lot to be said for the the people who are really trying to make it out there and, and yeah, just, I think that's where a lot of, I think maybe the struggles that I saw and got myself in at certain times, um, I could identify myself with the people who live there. Um, yeah, just that it's, it's, it's kind of hard to describe, but, uh, but, but I think that, um, yeah, creatively when when you're stuck in a in a place like that sometimes you force yourself to 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 shut off and 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 go be creative because it yeah it's it 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 keeps you going whereas when you're in more creative places um you know like like the you know sort of melbourne areas where you're surrounded by other artists or in the blue mountains where you're surrounded by lots of beautiful scenery and and other artistic stuff you're inspired whereas i think sometimes when you're in those, um, yeah, sort of concrete well, jungle situations it's or basically something. basically you know? Western Sydney, as far as I can see, is like a suburban ghetto. It's a bloody tough place to live, and very few people end up getting out of it. And it's and 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 I say this uh, from uh, not not to inspire a political conversation or something like that, but there are very few Australians living in Western Sydney these days. It's basically enclaves of different multicultural groups, you know living next door to each other and very few of them interact with each other and that that's a real issue and that's an mm. issue that you know Gough Whitlam opened us up to multiculturalism okay the Lima agreement and all this sort of stuff but there are consequences to these things and one of them is Western Sydney two and a half or something like three million people in an yeah. area that size you know yeah. half of half of the country's Islamic uh, community live in Sydney 
that part of Sydney yeah. alone. I mean, and these things, you can't have that without there being conflict. I'm sorry, but it's just how it is. Uh, speaking truth to power in these, in these sort of comments. But, you know, it's parts of it. Oh, I'll never forget. One day when I was uh, in Sydney, and I remember talking to, and I, I, first time I've shared this story, so you got a scoop, but I was talking to the wife of the, or the sister, sorry, of the then Interior Minister for Timor-Leste, East Timor. And she, she said to me, and I quote, that she felt safer walking around Dili than she did walking around Bankstown. And I thought, well, there mm. you go. You know, and, and from the perspective that there are things that the media aren't reporting, that we know that they've, they've got a, an enormous police station there at Bankstown, and it's it's an extremely hostile place for certain people if you aren't part of the kith and kin of the people that are now living there and the like. So it's basically a cultural, ironically, because of this, it's a cultural and a creative void. There is, there's virtually, there's, I mean, I, I know that there's some hip hop artists coming out of Mount Druitt these days. Some of the Samoan and the Islander lads are, are doing really well with that sort of stuff. But outside of that, it is just a grind. It is a keep up with the Joneses. It is Audis. It is religious religious fanaticism. This sort of thing, and I don't think if you're from Sydney, as of course I spent some time in Sydney, having uh, being educated there, you understand that. So it's a, it's a very complicated place, mate. I think, and for it to have inspired your music in any kind of a way, you're one of the first artists that I've spoken to where that's where that's happened. Yeah, I I, I guess um, that you know, like sort of growing up in the mountains and then moving you know only really like sort of 25 minutes up the road but being at the base of the mountains and then going to into western sydney not quite into the heart like bankstown but but on the periphery um realizing that you know i had it pretty good growing up and that no matter what the nationality is in in those areas because there are a lot of you know uh, white anglo saxon uh, people living in those areas as well they are, as you say, just kind of stuck in this sort of, uh, it's, it's not to be political, but I often say that a lot of the people there are the people who are living in the cracks in between the left and the right, as in like, yeah, it doesn't matter who we, it doesn't matter who we vote for, you know, whether it's the, the left or the right, there's people that just get left behind no matter who gets voted in um, because they're, they're living on the poverty line or they're sort of, you know, they're, uh, there's this, you know, there's so many of those job finder places and Centrelink affiliated, you know, global skills places around, around there. They're, they're, yeah. you know, it's like news agency, you know, kebab shop, Centrelink place, uh, convenience store. And that's, sure, that, that's, yeah. and that's, that, that's the, you know, that, that's the, the makeup of all these kind of corner shops. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's just a lot of that going on, and I think just realized that I'd, you know, sort of maybe taken some of my upbringing for granted, but also that despite the fact a lot of these people are still really resilient, and um, and some of them are really lovely too, because we we were neighbors with them, you know, we sure we, yeah. But you know, I guess so from a creative like, perspective, it just hints at the fact that it is very difficult to be a creative type and live there. Yeah, there is. There were a few musicians, sort of near where I was, but a lot of the reason is just because it was a cheap area to live in. <laughs> so um, there, but yeah, definitely, I think there there is just a yeah, as you say, there is a little bit of a void in those those areas, and mm. most of the because there there was a local um, rehearsal studio, and then sometimes I go to one with the guys because they're the, the band all live a bit closer to Sydney. So we go to one that is actually quite close to Bankstown sometimes. Um, yeah. cause it's kind of a halfway point for all of us. And, um, most of the bands that you hear rehearsing are kind of just cover bands who are, who I'm gathering are just sort of like all dads, um, who just <laughs> yeah, kind of, that, that'd be me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's literally me. But that kind <laughs> But, but that kind of proves your point is in like most of the bands that are rehearsing in these rehearsal studios in those areas are just kind of middle-aged dads playing covers. And, and sometimes we're kind of like, are we the only guys playing like our own music here? Like we're, we're you know, sort of, and I'm not, I'm not making a judgment because I play covers music for, for a living on, on weekends most of the time, you know, 
Normally. Yeah, I, know, I know what you're saying, though. Yeah, I know what you're saying, and, and I remember. I used to be in Velveteen in Sydney, actually, and I remembered those days. Like, like that was, oh, I can't remember the name of the rehearsal studio in Belmore we used to rehearse at, but that was such a cool rehearsal studio. I remember the guy's name, Leo. He used to run that, or he was the guy mm. on the desk anyway. But, man, you'd go in there and you'd have some internationally renowned artists in the room next to you, like Tina, like literally Tina Arena used to rehearse in the room next to us. And yeah. I used to hear her band and want to give up. They were that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so yeah. I, I, I hear you. And you do hear the cover bands as well. So, yeah, I, th- I think just Sydney's a tough town to, to sort of graft a living, I think. And so people are looking to make money to make ends meet, meet any way that they possibly can. That's certainly my perception of it these days. I, I haven't been there for a long time, so I can't talk about it with authority. But that, my only observation would, would be that. But, uh, but, mate, look, the other thing is yeah. I better let you go. I've got to head to the next interview. But this is uh, – I appreciate you going there with some of these yep. topics because I think it's important. Most of my audience is overseas and they mm. like listening to the, the variety of, you know, influences and uh, forces, if you like, that are at play when musicians and artists from Australia try to go about their daily things. So, mate, you know, before yeah. I let you go, though, tell the listener, where can they find your music? Yeah, so um, all the socials are called Gavin Bowles Music, um, uh, Bowles, B-O-W-L-E-S. Um, so that's uh, Facebook and Instagram. Or if you go to GavinBowlesMusic.com, that's got links to everything and the most recent film clip up the top. Um, and normally a list of shows are on the website as well. So when I'm back to doing shows, um, either solo or with the band, they'll be listed there as well. Um, and yeah, as I said, we'll, we'll be releasing, I'm planning on releasing another single, um, soon as well, just because, uh, you know, I've, I've got a few that are, that are ready or almost ready and, you know, I can't play shows right now. So I thought a mm. good opportunity to at least release something else. Yeah, and, you know, at least that, I yeah. think, I think people are pretty receptive to new, um, to, to new output by artists right now because everyone's in the same position. We're just sitting around on our phones and our computers. So, you know, I know that I've just been listening to music and watching movies I've been meaning to for ages. So it's a good time. It's a good time to release something, I guess. It is indeed. All right. Well, uh, you heard the man, everybody get out there and support his music. It is great stuff. Uh, so what can I say? Thanks very much for the conversation, mate. And, uh, look, I'll, I'll post this uh, probably in the next few days or so. So I'll, I'll link you up on socials. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem at all, mate. All right, please keep on making music. I enjoy what you do. All right, will do. Thanks very much, Andrew. Thanks, brother. No worries at all. Talk to you later. Catch you. Bye. You've been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List Online. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith, and that was Western Sydney-based singer, songwriter, and composer Gavin Bowles that you just heard from. Thanks very much for listening.